I want you to take a moment and just think about your calendar. I want you to think about your calendar and ask yourself, am I a busy person? Because I don't know about you, but I can pretty much say that most of us can say, we're busy people. I mean, there's never enough hours in the day. There's always something to do. We're always tired and exhausted. Our vacations aren't long enough. There's always something that we, is on our plate that we have to cover. And so a lot of times, we're so busy. Does that sound like you? Does that sound like your life sometimes? That you just feel like you're on this roller coaster of life and it just seems like you can't stop? See, a lot of times when I talk with people in the church, a lot of times they say, you know, I have this feeling of where I'm just constantly on the go. And not just in my life, but in my spiritual life. Where I'm struggling with my life to the point where I feel like my relationship with Christ is just faltering. That I feel farther away from Him. My faith is growing cold. And it's because I just don't feel close to Him anymore. And the reason for this oftentimes is because people are getting so busy in their calendars that they're not making time for God. That they're not making time to really enjoy Him. One of the things that I was doing this week was I was going over my calendar and I was just amazed at how full my calendar is. To the point where I'm e even filling up 2013 and I'm just thinking, wow, my calendar is getting full. And that's a good thing. My faith is being active. I'm spending time with people. I'm doing the Lord's work. And I encourage you to take those calendars on the back table and fill out every day of someone's name of someone who you're going to encourage or pray for or serve or something you're going to do for the Lord. And that's what I do. But one of the things that I looked at in my calendar was, you know, I'm doing all these wonderful things, all these great things that Christ has called me to do. But I saw a glaring problem with my calendar. I looked at it and I said, you know what, I don't have a day just completely set apart and says, you know, I'm going to focus completely on God. I'm going to renew myself with God. I'm going to be like David and I'll just spend time writing hymns in my heart. I'm going to be like Daniel and I, don't, I will push aside the administrative work that like he did and just, just focus on praying to God and just be re-energized by that. And I looked at that calendar and I just thought, I'm not doing that. And that, there's a problem with that. It's so good that we are being active in our faith. It's so good that we're serving God. But sometimes we need to take that time to slow down and say, I need some time alone with my God. Now, every day I spend time with God. But sometimes it's good to just have a whole day where you can just focus on Him. You can forget about the worries of the world. You can forget about the deadlines. You can worry, forget about the bills. You can forget about other people and just focus on you and your relationship with God. I think about how my wife and I, we'll, it's good that we'll eat dinner together at the dining room table. We'll spend time together each day. We'll spend time talking. But isn't it wonderful and special to just take your wife out on a date? Even though you're eating and talking somewhere else, you're just going on a date with her and you're just remembering why you're in love with her. You remember the memories and this nostalgia. You just remember how much you think about her and how much you appreciate her and you just reignite that passion. You see, that's the same thing. Sometimes we'll spend time with God like we do with our wives at the dinner table, but sometimes it's good to just have a time where you're taking a spiritual date and just spending it with God. Just remembering all the things that He has done for you. Just remembering what you have to be thankful for. Just worshiping and glorifying Him. I think about how we need to sometimes do this because sometimes we'll, our relationships will grow cold. I mean, I hear a lot about marriage relationships and how marriage relationships, people grow apart and they grow cold where they were really excited about each other when they first met and they were saying, I love you, I can't wait to spend time with you. But then they get married and then they start growing apart because they didn't do what they did before. They didn't take time to just enjoy each other. They didn't just take time to just focus on each other. What they did to appreciate one another. And instead of that, they start seeing a relationship as an obligation and something that they're not as passionate about. And I see how we do this in our relationships, but we even sometimes do this with our God. 
and with Jesus Christ, where we're excited for him, but then we, because we're so distracted by the worries of the world, because we're so distracted by all the deadlines and the bills, we're so distracted by all the things that are busy and all the technology that keeps us in contact with the 24-7 world, that we don't take time to just enjoy God. I, I, had a, I have a hard time doing that for myself personally because I'm, all, I'm a doer. When I, I spend some time meditating and thinking, and then when I have my mindset, I do it. That, that's just my temperament. That's my personality. But one of the things that I think about is that sometimes I just need to calm down and relax and just focus on God and refocus my life. I know a lot of people here in this congregation are sometimes cold in their faith right now. I know some people in this congregation are just discouraged in their faith right now. I know some people who sometimes see their relationship with God as an obligation and their attendance to the worship service as a chore and their service and evangelism is something that they have to do just because they don't want to go to hell. But that's not really the right idea. I know sometimes as I'm preaching through this concept of true discipleship, I'm making known the standards of Christ. And are they hard? Yes. Are they difficult? Yes. Do you have to deny yourself and pick up your cross daily? Yes. But to be a full, well-rounded, mature, faithful Christian, not only do we have to be doing stuff, not only do we have to be living the right lifestyle, one of the things that I learned is that you have to learn to be still. You have to learn to calm down so that you can just focus on your relationship with God. I mean, think about that time in your life when you met that special husband or that special wife and how you spent every waking moment thinking about that person. You woke up in the morning and you said, I just wish that work would end so I can go on a date. Or do you remember how you'd be freer with your money saying, I can't wait to buy this girl a gift. I can't wait to go on a date with this person. I mean, you didn't see those things as sacrifice. You didn't see those things as obligation saying, oh, I have to go on a date with the love of my life. You didn't see it that way. You were excited and passionate about it. And you waited for those moments where you could be alone with that person. You know, as a, as a preacher, one of the things that, that they warned us in preaching school and something that I, and I try to make sure I don't do is they warn, you know, sometimes preachers have the coldest faith in the congregation. And the reason for that is because preachers get into this mode where they wake up in the morning and they're just doing stuff for God and doing stuff for God that they forget who they're doing stuff for. That they'll, do, they'll, they'll in a sense, make I, ministry idolatry in their life where they're focusing more on the service to God rather than God himself. And I've seen this before where people and preachers and elders and church leaders have been ones that they focus on it so much that they fall off the deep end doctrinally. Or some people will fall into the trap of sin because they've grown cold in their faith. Or some people have just given up their faith altogether. I mean, that's common. And I look at my life and I say, I don't want to be that kind of person. I don't want to be that kind of preacher. Uh, but how do I keep myself from being that kind of person? How can I keep myself from making ministry idolatry in my life? How can I make it so that I'm effective and zealous and passionate in my ministry? How can I be faithful to God? The answer is having that strong relationship with God. That He is the major focus. And as I was thinking about my spiritual life and I was thinking about cultivating my family to be godly and as I was thinking about this church and how we're going to be faithful disciples and how we're going to do amazing things for God, one verse kept on popping into my head. And that was Psalm 46, verse 10. A very common verse that you understand which says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. One of the things that we know is God is going to be glorified. He is going to be worshipped. He is going to be exalted. But one of the things, responses that we have in that aspect of exalting God is learning to be still and know that He is God. How many of you actually take time to be still and know that He is God? I mean, do you take time out of your day and just, just, just stop? I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm a fidgety person. I have a hard time sitting still. I have like ADD or something, I don't know. But I'm just like really fidgety. I mean, some of you right now are probably having a problem staying still, sitting, listening to a sermon. 
I mean, why is that? Because in our society, we're active. If you're not doing something, something's wrong. If you're not being active, something's wrong. If you're not playing on your phone or getting information, something's wrong.